Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, Guile here and welcome back to the Forged Alliance Forever promotional series and that's it, they're back to school, term time has resumed, it's a fabulous time to be a parent. If you don't have kids, you might not appreciate what I'm talking about, but one day you might and then you will understand the joy that is the resumption of term time. That's it, and it's terrible really, you drop them off in the mornings and uh, they make their way into school and then they turn around that's it for them holidays are over you know that's that's it term time's resumed they turn around to you and look at you with a wistful look for some kind of semblance of understanding and uh, all your inner monologue does at that point is just go ah not even <laughs> any words just ah but anyway uh hopefully that means we can uh, return to normality and ramp up the casts here at Galcast to somewhere in the region of three to four a week, somewhere where we were at at the end of last term. We're going to kick things off today with a custom 5v5 with a, an eclectic mix of Joes and Pros, and this action today is going to take place on Canis 5v5 Special Edition Fixed Hydro. How very exotic. I'm ready, you guys are ready, and the players are sure as hell ready, so let's go on over to the game zone and see how these guys are going to get on. So Canis, we know what we're dealing with here. We also know that the UI is completely absurdly mistaken and believes that this is Team 1 down here at the bottom and this is Team 2 up here at the top. Going first for Team 1 down here at the bottom right in Combat Green, we have Fast Planet. And he is going Cyberin, opening first land there. Next up to the northwest in breast cancer awareness pink we have sophist or sophist we're going to call him sophist and he is going cybran as well opening first land after him team member number three for team one dispensing with his customary cybran and choosing the very attractive no called uef it's none other than the quintessential star of faf it's slow in lurid green opening first land and then team member number four to his left over here is Democracy in Vivacious Violet going cyber in opening first land. And last but not least up front in Baby Pink we have Konkanum and he is going Seraphim opening first land. So three cyber in a UEF and a Seraphim there for team one. Let's take a look at team two up here at the top first of all in Mellow Yellow it's a Lollipop and he's going Seraphim opening first land. After him, down here to the southeast, we have Hiena, uh, who I don't know whether it's a boy or a girl's name, but I believe it's Polish. Anyway, whatever it is, it's UEF in Pontiff White opening first land. On the road already is team member number three for team one. It's AstroFu91 also going UEF in Burgundy Red opening first land. Uh, team member number four to his right is Aleg Nagi Obik Karaj, as we've had him on Guilecast once before, but we refer to him as Alec because otherwise that would be just ridiculous. And uh, he is going Cybrin in Elephantine Grey, going first and second land. And last but not least, already on the move in Ferrari Red, it's the five time winner of Guilecast's fabulous personality award. It's Maverick, that's right, on the move, uh, dispatching uh, a Seraphim. ACU in today's fight instead of his customary UEF and going first, second, third, fourth, no sorry, first land, second air and then third, fourth, fifth land it would seem. So those are the teams, 94% gain quality in this one and that's quite a feat when you consider the range of talent we've got here. So at the bottom end we have, who is it, Konkanum down here on a thousand and then next to him as low on 2100 so a very wide spectrum of players here first blood out there to Aleg who picked off what looked like either a scout or a lab I think it was a lab making its way in there around the edge of the cliff face additional units expanding around the map with great gusto and haste in comes a striker there from Hiena coming down and looks like it might potentially if he wheels right at the right time might potentially run into a couple of NGs there one from slow and one from democracy but it looks like he's gonna head on south does snag a scout on his way down 
but democracy is all over this business trying to chase it down with a mantis getting horribly confused with the terrain there new firmware for mantis being released next week of course cybrins pretty sloppy with their updates Vienna wailing away on that T1 mass extractor, but I suspect won't complete the kill as a couple of Mantis come in there to finish him off. Very nicely done indeed. Now, interestingly, of course, the 5v5 setup of this means that the middle players typically go for air support and uh, also means that unless the other players around them really give the uh, extra share of mexes to that extra player then they might possibly be stifled on mass and of course that's important why because slow team one's top player is sitting in that very position you're going to want to get him as much mass as possible in an ideal world but a couple of nice bombs there from team two maverick scoring some kills some engineer kills there on sophist or sophist Another bomber coming in there taking care of Konkunum's radar plonked right next to the hydrocarbon. Going to deny a little bit of early vision from Team 1. Hiena rolling out with a few strikers. Going to take care of a forward mass extractor. And I like what I'm seeing here from Astrofu uh, helping out with Hyena. I want to say Hyena, but that's of course not Hyena. It's Hiena. But nonetheless, helping out with construction at the forward base over the causeway. Of course, the other side to that means that a little less build capacity in the base to fend off against Zlo, who is keeping his ACU right next to the air factory there, hoping to build up presumably an air force as quickly as possible. Maverick still trying to harass with some bombers. What he doesn't manage to complete, it looks like Aleg certainly shout. Mantis coming in down uh, right over to enemy territory now for Team 2. And Fast Planet's going to react by bringing out quite a large force of Mantis that have been stationed up here back around the cliff edge to deal with that. So defensive posture, but that's not a bad amount of T1 spam for six minutes gone on Canis. Another T1 bomber gets shot down, but Maverick putting out some reasonably good pressure around the map. We're getting the first little bit of ACU on ACU action here as Maverick goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Sophist. Sophist, of course, with a pretty sizable advantage with these Mantis nearby. Maverick down to around 6,000 hit points and falling. Does he have access to overcharge? No, he doesn't, and that is why those Mantis are still alive. A quick T1 bomber run over the top, though, takes four of them down to virtually nothing. Another bombing run will take care of those. So it is pretty much just Sophist and Maverick going toe-to-toe -to -toe here, but we do have the odd unit from Aleg coming in from different avenues. Maverick now down to 3,000 hit points and falling, but Sophist also in the yellow here with 5,000 hit points remaining and falling. Maverick in the red. A little bit of a build block there to slow Sophist's progression. And surely Sophist's going to have to desist. Otherwise, he's going to exchange kills. Overcharges deals with a couple of Mantis there. And now Maverick coming into a RAS from the west as well. Sophist should be able to handle that. Not a huge amount of firepower coming from the two land factories over there. Bomber's still coming in now from Maverick. Takes him down into the red. 2300 hit points remaining. Maverick clear of danger for the moment, but still sub 2000. So interesting little exchange early on there. Both ACUs getting out without getting scalped. Vienna and Astrofu slowly make their way forward. A couple of triads online belonging to Hiena. Konkunum ready for them with T2 Tech. Has one T2 PD online getting up another right next to it. So it looks like he's going to hunker down in here for the long haul. Also has quite a lot on the ground in terms of T1 spam. Sophist makes it to the river. 
without any major difficulties. 2,600 hit points left on the clock. Still those T1 bombers continuing to reach over the middle from Maverick. The odd engineer from Hiena strafing just a little bit too close to Konkanum's forward position. Meanwhile, down here in the bottom left, Democracy has been very busy walling off these two plateaus here. Wanting to stop any forward progression there from Lollipop. Lollipop is on the move on the west edge, western edge of the map, however. And a lot of build capacity getting caught up there for Democracy. It to be about four or five engineers. TMD going up to protect the mass extractor or mass extractors behind him I should say doesn't have anything to worry about from this trajectory democracy still firmly in his base hasn't decided to push out west and set up shop in that bottom right corner his mirror on the other side however has Ale getting an upgrade on his com and has a lot of engineers over that way, reclaiming. So a lot of build capacity to call on as and when he needs it. A little push now from Sophist, Mantis and Medusa base. Can't go too far north. We've got a Cerberus turret online there belonging to Aleg. In fact, another one. In fact, a whole line of assorted PD going up in the middle there. No real way through at the moment but if we take a quick look at mass totals harvested so far 99,000 to 92,000 so a healthy 7k advantage for team 2 in accrued mass so far zappers and Cerberus turrets going up in preparation for a defense that might have to be made i'm not sure it's going to help lollipop engaging with his commander now as well as a very significant group of t1 units certainly numerically superior to whatever democracy's got on this area of the map Quick look to the top right. Looks like we've got a bit of a push coming in from Fast Planet as well. Alec on an upgrade, but that's about to finish any second. He's already got the T2 engineering suite, but we'll check in with that again in just a moment. Lollipop now breaching over those wall sections, and a large gap has emerged in those fortifications. T1 spam pouring through it and working on what few defences have been erected in the meantime by Democracy. There goes the last Cerberus turret on that plateau. We do have some T1 PD and a second section of wall emplacements going up, but they're not going to get anywhere near completion. T1 spam moving south. And we'll slaughter all of the engineers in place. Aleg off that upgrade went for T3, so a lot of build power over on that top right-hand corner, and it was enough to force Fast Planet to withdraw to the other plateau. T2 mechs under pressure down here at the bottom left. He's going to let the Zooey's finish that off. No, nope, changed his mind. Gonna go back to it and then work on a shield gen but look out it's fire beetle time sophist inbound now with a skyhook full of fire beetles gonna come right down i would imagine on top of lollipop's acu the shield gen's online but that's not going to help him what he could have done with is some t1 pd but they are not going to get online they land on a few of the engineers and pick up some of those but lollipop eats the rest and gets taken down to about 700 hit points i can't believe it quickly zaps the transport and then works on rebuilding the shield gen but corsairs have already been dispatched by democracy who is about to present a healthy care package of t2 air to team two there's no way that shield gen's getting online in comes the rocket barrage 
Boom, baby! Lollipop ejected from the game almost on the cusp of 13 minutes gone in this one and Team 2 find themselves down a player. Units initially transferred over there to Alec, but fortunately no fairies have to die today because full share is not on. Attack missile launcher up front there from Kiena. Not sure how many he's fired, but he hasn't garnered any kills with it as yet because we've got TMD in place from Konkonen, but in comes Slow with a strap bomber at 13 minutes. Is he going to get a decent run out of this one? Well, he's going to get a T2 P gen out of Kiena. Hasn't quite got enough distance between him and the interceptors, though. Gets a T2 mass extractor for Astrofu before getting shot down and returning a little bit of a mass gift in kind. Just couldn't quite get the separation that was required to go on one of those epic bombing sprees that you can see the first strap bombers do when they emerge for the first time in a team game. You know if anybody's capable of pulling off something like that it's slow but alas wasn't to be today. A few engineers there for Alex straying a little bit too close to danger. Checking in at the middle. Sophist rather brazenly sitting out in the open, relatively undefended. Maverick has not re-emerged since he withdrew to his base. ACU sitting in there working on some T2 power generators. But now Democracy, should he feel the need, could push up the left-hand side. Has a few units over there, but not a huge army as yet. Another strap bomber out for Zlow. Going to go after those pillars and flapjacks that are stationed in the center of their territory belonging to Vienna. The question is, what's he going to select for the next target? It's a whole horde of engineers, which would be a lovely snag. He's going to pause that plane over the top of another T2P gen and take that out. Astrofu does get a nice pass over the top with his Inties, which takes a huge chunk of HP out of that strap bomber, and a wasp will finish the job. So Astrofu up to T3 air as well in the nick of time. So he's going to bring in his ASF for a little bit of an exchange there. Doesn't like the odds now that he sees that Astrofu has some T3 air as well. It's going to pull out slightly only to re-engage Alex interceptors in a slightly more favorable position. Maverick with a couple of platoons of fams and a few Zooies now marching down the eastern edge of the map and looking like he's going to engage fast planet might score a few viper kills here but in turn is going to lose the rest of these horses to that mantis horde that's been stationed up on that plateau but hasn't really been able to breach any further forward thanks to Aleg and his chunky commander And Sophist actually brazenly now marching upriver. The <laughs> waypoint actually right next to Hiena's com. Very cheeky behavior indeed. Taking another look at the mass totals. Well, Team 2 has now inched even further ahead. 200 and 51k to 219 of course a certain proportion of that will have to be factored in to the reclaimed value of lollipops base that mass that went into building it has now re-entered circulation of team two team two's economy broadsword getting stuff done for slow in the center Slow running screen for that gunship with a pretty decent number of ASFs. In fact, let's take a moment to check out 
who's got the advantage in ASF number. So we've got 15 on the field so far for Zlo. Astrofu is at 12, so moving up pretty fast. And in fact, not too far behind Zlo in Eco either. Slow on 144, and uh, you might think, well, that's surprising. It's not anywhere near the top. We've got 166 there for Alec, but really, again, as we see, Zolo has been operating for most part off the main base mass down here. He's only recently really held on to the mass extractors up here for the last kind of five, ten minutes or so. Maverick came in with T1 spam a couple of times and tried to pick those off. A few containment issues there, but certainly Zlo is the man to beat if Team 2 can somehow deal with him. This would all go just a little bit easier. Certainly they're building up a healthy mass lead for the moment. Sophis though moves out of the water and comes out to try and take on Yenna's forward base but no sooner does he do, do that the whole air wing of stingers that Astrofu had been lying in wait with rolls out and engages Sophist's ACU takes him down into the yellow 6600 HP Sophist brings in his own inties to try and deal with that and uh, they're actually doing a lot better than I thought they would. ASFs and interceptors eventually tidy that up, but Astrofu losing about three gunships or so in that exchange, much more than he would have wanted to. Viper missile exchange, the order of business over in the east between Alec and Fast Planet. Constant, unmistakable jostle of two armies with ranged equipment as they skirmish back and forth. And now, slow going to town on. Yenna's forward position. Yenna's actually spent a lot of time in the water over the last five or ten minutes. A few Wagners rolling up the river there from Sophist. In fact, someone told me that I should be pronouncing Wagner something in a different way. I can't remember exactly how. Perhaps you'd like to reiterate it in the comment section below if you're watching it. All I think of is Robert Wagner, the actor, and I see that name. But Slow picks off the shield gen and that forward base now exposed. But look out! A lovely little bombing run there from... Who was it? Was it Sophist or was it Democracy? in with a wave of Corsairs. Well, it must have been Democracy. So if it's still at T1 Air, picks off Kiena just as he was on the edge of the water there. Very nice work indeed by Team 1. And Team 2 lose another player. So it's now 3 versus 5. And engineers roll in now from Astrofu and Aleg to capitalize on the demise of their teammate and the mexes that have now been relinquished. Astrofu on an upgrade in the river there, and Sophie's just waiting with those amphibious tanks. Roll those in at any time, really. They've got torpedoes on board. I don't think there's enough of them to force Astrofu into cancelling that upgrade. Can't bring those tanks out to attack without exposing them to the Stinger gunship fire and slow. Nowhere near 
dominant enough now. In fact, he's not dominant at all. Let's take another look at the ASF numbers on this one. So 17 in the air there for Zlow. Astrofu, contrastingly, on 27. So actual sizable air advantage now for Team 2. Starlifter inbound with build capacity there for Zlow. A lot of mexes, of course, now suddenly freed up over here with the demise of Hiena. I don't think these engineers are going to make it to their destination as a quick pass by Astro Foo's ASFs shoots down that <laughs> Starlifter and uh, a little, little bit of cheeky BM in chat from Astro Foo. Never hurt anyone. But look out, the experimental that was completed just a moment ago by Fast Planet now making a move on Alex for forward base and there's a crab under construction that's only about 50% complete and he might not get to keep it, although I haven't said that, there's an awful lot of T2 point defense in here and quite a lot of shield coverage as well, albeit not fully upgraded. First shield goes down. There goes the second one. It's going to be interesting. But the Monkey Lord just plummeting in health. Down below 7,000 already. Aleg emerges from the shield gen to help finish it off with an overcharge. But be sure the Monkey Lord died even before the overcharge connected. And now that horde of Cerberus turrets free to open up on what's left. Let's just take a look at how many PDs we're talking about there. So we've got nine units of Tech 2 point defense in place. And now a broadsword or two coming in to help from Astrofu as well. So Aleg will not only get to keep that position, but also the Megalith seems to have escaped relatively unscathed. That could be a problem for Team 1 in the near future. Meanwhile, a second experimental out from Team 1. Democracy in the river at the moment with a Monkey Lord. Looked like he was beelining initially for Maverick's forward position, but he's got more dramatic ideas in mind. It's going to come in around the back of the main base. Meanwhile, those Wagners we saw earlier have emerged onto the mainland and Astrofu getting to grips with it not only with a broadsword but also hands on action with the ACU something we always love to see of course here at Guilecast why use something else when you can put your commander on the line should be etched into their gravestones interesting passage of play there up on the eastern edge of the map and that side of things for Fast Planet now just devoid of everything We're used to seeing that large green blob that's been so present throughout the last 15 minutes or so now nothing left of it another experimental online this time it's Astrofu in the main base with a fat boy and a whole horde of broadswords as well loyalists coming in in sporadic single file fashion there from democracy just gonna get hosed down and Democracy actually, after seeing that fat boy, has stopped with that Monkey Lord. Of course, no real cover gleaned from the river. Most of it actually above water. Kiena telling his teammates to work on a nuke launcher. Maverick still harassing with T1 at the moment but working on an Ethota 27,000 hit points of 67,000 complete there and uh, it looks like Alec could have taken Hiena's advice queuing up a nuke launcher there in between those two ion reactors for the newbies out there who don't know the significance of power structures you get a speed and discount bonus when you uh, 
place buildings that require power adjacent to structures that produce power. Of course, the drawback to that is when the structures that produce power get blown up, they do a little bit of AoE damage thanks to their volatility. Large tack missile attacks inbound there from Alec, whilst at the same time a forward push from the experimental, that crab rolling up with almost full health down the eastern edge of the map and very little really in this area to stop it. A large open gap in their defenses on that eastern edge. Slow and Astrofu going toe-to-toe -to -toe in the skies over in the west, meanwhile. And Astrofu definitely getting the better of that exchange and just wiping the floor with Slow as he tries to withdraw with those ASFs. Slow not happy with his micro on that exchange. Well, it happens. Moxie trying to chase down that fat boy with the spider bot saw his opportunity just trying to get in range really the fat boy making or trying to make it to shield coverage once again gets just inside but the shield collapses anyway and the monkey lord will at the very least wipe out Astro Fu's experimental I'm not sure he's going to get back to base with only 4.2k HP. There's also an Ithota inbound from Maverick who just completed that. Astrofu doing some nice work in the skies so far in this one. Aleg rolling out with his crab. You can almost see the GoPro and the extreme sports flag hanging off the side of that megalith as it scales the edge of the cliff. Uh, that's very bad indeed for Team 1. Zlo's forward mass option now wiped off the planet. Drops him down pretty significantly in eco, losing those three mass extractors. Still holding relatively well considering, having a few glitches there with power and whatnot, but certainly could be a lot worse. Fast Planet nearly has a crab of his own. I think we're getting some more build capacity on that because Alex Crab is not too far away. T3 mobile artillery fire. Raining down on that position. So we've got a nuke launcher that's been completed by Zlow in the center there. We saw one queued up further up. Almost missed a spider bot going down. In fact, Sophist or Sophist down to 2,000 HP, so a lot of action at the front line of Team 1's base that we've been missing out of. Oh, File Planet completes, oh sorry, File Planet, Fast Planet completes his Megalith, but needs to turn it around ASAP as it's getting pummeled in the behind, which is generally never a good thing. Democracy doing some good work with his strap bombers, but also has a crab of his own firing those huge twin cannons into the superstructure there of Alex's experimental fast planet. Finally manages to get his experimental turnaround and slow comes in with a personal shield and overcharges because why the hell not? Maverick still inbound with his own experimental. Let's check in with the nuke launcher's progression. So we've got one online up there. 
for Alec. That's about 50% done on the missile. And Slow also about 50% done on his. So it's going to be incredibly close. Alec seems to have a strategic missile defense online. How are we doing on anti-nuke for Team 1? Well, I can't immediately see any in Slow's base or indeed anywhere else for that matter. Whereas Team 2 seem to have one online. Maverick still moving forward with that. Ethota landing some of those huge AOE blasts on those bricks from Democracy. Konkanum with an experimental of his own and a Thotra of his own just shadowing Mavericks. Should he get any ideas on pushing forward? And another air exchange that looks like it might be going quite well for Astrofu. Slow just can't seem to get the numbers together on this one. there with a million topics discussed. And Astrofu having annihilated Zlo's Air Force pretty much once again. Now wreaking all kinds of havoc on the crabs down here with those broadswords going relatively uncontested. Great move from Sophist would be some bounces right now from that T3 land HQ. Need to get some fire on those gunships, get them turning back where they came from. Fast Planet and his megalith there down to 36,000 HP out of 110,000. Mavericks, Ethota really deep into the red, just a thousand hit points. He's trying to make it out of there. And I think has just managed to get out of range from Fast Planet's Megalith. Exceptional piece of luck there. In comes another Ethota there from Maverick, and in comes a wave of strap bombers that are going after Slow. He has a personal Strategic shield, launch detected. but will it be enough? And there goes the nuke. Where is it heading? Well, it's going straight after Slow. Strategic launch detected. Slow, well aware that he might be losing his base, counterfires with his own. This is going to be absolutely pivotal. I can't see any nuke defense on the first scan. And he hasn't got one. Oh, no. And Slow's base is wiped off the face of the earth. And, well, Team 2 prepared for the worst. Sensible forward nuclear disaster relief. And that is a major issue now for Team 1. Team 2, who actually have slipped behind in the mass totals by about 100,000 mass. It's hard to tell because it only abbreviates it, abbreviates it to one decimal once you hit a million. But uh, certainly they led for the first portion now behind. That will be a huge boost to morale and their attempt to take this game. Very nicely played indeed with that nuke call. And of course another one on the way. Already about 20 to 25% 
complete on that. Lots of strap bombers on the field for democracy, but we're seeing him do very much with them. This could be a golden opportunity, though. Maverick, with that Ethota, has taken down Konkanum's Ethota and caused an awful lot of damage in this forward position. There's another one on the way, but this should really hurt. Uh, looked like only three of the bombs were dropped there. That Ethota got off light. Konkanum in a precarious position now. He needs to get on the shield coverage really, really quickly. I don't think even that will help him at this point. Konkanum down to below 6,000 hit points. Doing the Canis two-step, but it's not going to be enough. He is going home at the 34-minute mark. Maverick manages to complete the kill. So Team 1 lose their first player. They'll be thankful, though, that it's their bottom-rated player. So that crab from Fast Planet gunned down by another experimental on the ridge there from Aleg. I don't think those bricks are going to make it home either. Or well, certainly one of them went, whoa, maybe I spoke too soon. Dipping out of range or radar coverage. Just the right moment. Or maybe not. <laughs> it's like those movies. The twist in the wrong direction at the last minute. Answer in the comment section below if you can think of one. Maverick still on the rampage with that Ethota. Still taking Revenant fire from Democracy as well. 1,700... Or sorry, 17,000 hit points remaining on that experimental so far. Astrofu says, enough is enough. I have relative air dominance. Bring those strap bombers out and I shall end them. Another couple of strap bombs connect with that Ethota. Bring it down to 12,000. They really have to deal with it before it takes out Democracy's western position as well. Another one lands. It needs just three or three more strap bombs. Something like that. Lots of flak and Sam's over here. Enough to discourage Astro food from hanging out over there, but Democracy run out of straps for the moment. Has started a T3 heavy artillery emplacement. So that could be interesting, but what have we got here? Sophist with a deceiver just balls out, rolling up the eastern edge of the map with Mazer. Aleg sitting under shield coverage and to me was he recycled a lot of those Cerberus turrets from earlier. Well, he just may have, but Sof is taking huge amounts of damage from the crab that just wasn't very far away at all. But Fast Planet has telemazered and taken out Maverick, who uh, conducts himself with the decorum with which we've become accustomed in his games. I'm just waiting for the shit game. Where is it? Where is it? Come on, Maverick. I know you've got it in you. Fast Planet teleports out of there before Alec can kill him off with a broadsword. In fact, he's taken it himself to the back there, manages to take down the nuke launcher. And half of Alex's base before he finally goes pop. Well, that's what Dr. Zarkov would call a rational transaction right there. Fast planet. 
going pop with all of his bits around the map means that Aleg avoids a little extra damage on that megalith on the plateau and then it became a 2v2 so huge back and forths in this one and uh, okay so Sophist and Fast Planet went down in that exchange but so did Maverick and Aleg got a real kicking losing that nuke launcher at the back unfortunately they didn't take out the strategic missile defense but has slow even attempted to rebuild the nuke well not that I can see democracy still a long way away from completion on that disruptor but slow has room to expand which is uh, generally a pretty terrifying thing to be on the receiving end of lots of mass to scoop up lots of extractors to build and room to build them Alec rolling in with that crab taking a little bit of fat boy fire for the while there but slow needs to present right angle on that fatty amount of punishment those crabs can take is quite ridiculous A very strange passage of play there brings us to a very strange lull in activity and there goes the megalith for Alec a bit more mass for slow to scoop up needs to be careful though of course doesn't have the initiative of the air game and a lot of strap bombers hanging out back here for Astrofu Broadswords have drawn in Slow's wasps and they should get finished off by Astrofoos. That might be a good time to go after Slow's comms, although with the amount of shield coverage he's got, he sure doesn't have enough firepower to kill him off. He's only going to get one or two passes with the amount of flayers Slow has stationed in the river there. Stealth Gen now online. That will afford a little bit extra protection. Democracy loses a crab to yet another megalith from Aleg. But Aleg not going to push forward with that one in case he runs into that fat boy firepower. And we've got another fat boy coming in from Astrofu coming down the southern bank of the river and slow with a pretty sizable air factory facility down there lots of air factories pumping out ASFs he really is determined to gain or regain control of the skies he basically has been pretty much outgunned by Astrofu for most of the game. Astrofu should probably think about turning into the river, and there he goes. Two to one odds, too much to contend with. Much more fluid game on the cards now. Air power likely to be critical. Astrofu sends in three strap bombers to go after the fat boys. And then a whole load more to follow up. To 
Democracy now with his own healthy group of ASFs as well. This is going to be an interesting little exchange now. And over the top of Zlo's players as well. But Astrofu's got so many ASFs. And look out, Alec inbound with a Soul Ripper and also moving in on Zlo's position with that Crab as well. Zlo will manage to make it into the water, I'm pretty sure. There he goes. Just about manages it. Is he going to be trying to ground fire him? Well, it certainly looks that way. Oh, I spoke too soon. Slow picked off. Alec denying. And there goes Team 1's top rated player. It is now Democracy all by his lonesome. And astonishingly, up at that point, Team 1 were still ahead by 100,000 mass. Now, Democracy used to have any chance here. He needs to get in and secure this ASAP. In fact, the first thing he needs to do is deal with that Soul Ripper. He's pumping out ASFs at a pretty good rate. Astro Fu already has a healthy advantage, though, in the skies. He has got some Myrmidons up and running some Sams and they will be prioritizing that experimental gunship he just doesn't need a rank of veterancy and he manages to avoid it that ion reactor that it was engaging survives with 3,500 hit points oh dear a second soul ripper <laughs> inbound from Alec But Democracy did manage to finish that artillery emplacement, and that is now working on what looks like Astro Fu's power grid. Soul Ripper, though, inbound. And this could really cause some damage now at full health upon entry. get in there, kill the power grid. The T3 artillery must surely be high priority. Could go straight after the commander, actually. But he would rather dismantle the base first. There goes almost all of the T3 power gens. Just two remaining. Democracy taking a battering down to 6,500 hit points on the comp sure why he was standing there obviously on a cigarette break terribly bad idea in the notoriously poorly ventilated cyber and ACUs he's gonna make it under the other bank of shield gens to the west slow says that was a strange game yeah it really was there's no two ways about it very unusual sequence of events So much mass to be harvested, but Democracy, with almost no build capacity in his base whatsoever, and now still has to somehow contain the oncoming threat from Team 2. Astrofu rolling forward with a fat boy. And I like what I see here, a very underused tactic, the egg. Don't often see crabs used for their unit producing capabilities, but they are excellent at it. And certainly, Democracy could use all of the factory space he can muster right now. And a third Soul Ripper inbound for Alec. Democracy with pretty heavy set of SAM batteries online. Chew through that Soul Ripper pretty damn quickly, but still not enough to save those power generators. Democracy has to be hurting for power now. Well, no, look at that bleeding mass. Piles of mass poo will be building up next to 
the T1 mass storage. Still waiting for someone to make that mod. Please have a mass poo mod. Please, mod developers. Democracy trying to chase down Astrofoo's fat boy with the crab, but such a huge gulf between them. Not see that happening anytime soon. Might manage to head him off with the second crab over here, though. Astrofoo playing directly into its path. And of course, those huge cannons chew through the tiny shield capacity on board that fat boy in next to no time. Why on earth he's worried about anything other than the fat boy right now is beyond me, but... Crabs, of course, not known for their intelligence. <laughs> Astrofu astonishingly didn't see that megalith. Couple of futile passes with some strap bombers. Donates mass and depletes a shield, but otherwise accomplishes very little indeed. Democracy clinging on to this game with no real prospect of coming out on top. Nothing with which to hit back at Team 2 at all. All he can really do is hold the line. I think we can afford to go to plus 3 and skip through the inevitable lull in this game while these two guys, or well, these two teams I should say, try and build up their stockpiles of weapons once again which have been thoroughly depleted by recent exchanges. And what have we got here? Is that a support commander? No, Alec! Just gonna bring his commander all the way down here and use that to hoover up some stuff. Well, it looks like he's got the cloak on board there, so Cloak and the Mazer. Technically, I suppose it's not a Mazer. Well, actually, it is the Mazer, isn't it? Because it's microwave laser. I always thought it was Mazer because it was sort of the Tele Mazer was a thing, but it is microwave laser. So that is why. Another couple of strap bombers inbound to donate mass. Just not sure what Astrofu is hoping to accomplish. So, two missiles. I'm presuming he's talking about the nuke launcher. And there we go. One in the clip. Ready to go. And uh, another one very nearly stocked up in the rack as well. Does he even have nuke defense? Well, he does got one in the line, it's got three anti-nuke missiles in it, so maybe that's what Astrofu is trying to go for. Aleg decide against uh, rolling in with his commander, which is a shame. That would have been very entertaining indeed. But 48 minutes gone, so slow kind of ejected about the 45, 46 minute mark, something like this. We've now had three minutes, um, with the exception of a couple of passes from some strap bombers, which are ineffectual. And, of course, the exchange between the fat boy and the megaliths. Very little has taken place. I suppose we have had those soul rippers rolling in to assault democracy as well, but they were shot down. They've depleted democracy's power grid massively. So much harvestable mass over here, but democracy, of course, without the build capacity to do anything about it, of course, bleeding mass still, wasting mass, you just can't physically spend it. These factories sitting idle up here. They could at least be producing units. I think this is a classic case of Sopcom head and I do not blame him because what do you do at this point? You know you are hopelessly outgunned. You just about have the defenses in place to hold off any attacks that your opponents can currently muster. But you know it's not going to be too long until they roll over you with something and whatever that thing might be you are just trying to anticipate and prepare for it a 
Uh, more often than not, that can make you think, well, I need build capacity, I need engineers to produce defensive structures, rather than thinking, well, I could at least be setting each and every factory I've got to be producing something. Certainly these could be upgrading to T3 and they could be producing bricks en masse. But it's so very easy to sit here in the comfort of the observer's position and not have to try and manage the economy, manage the intelligence and still work out strategy and micro at the same time. It's an awful lot of things that he has to contend with. First and foremost, most likely will be this megalith from Aleg. Can't really justify pushing in through the aperture there. There's another megalith for democracy waiting for him. Democracy with another one on the way as well. How is that eating into his mass totals? Well, rather unsurprisingly, not too much at all because he hasn't got the power to sustainably build at any decent rate. Those two or three soul rippers that have attacked him have really done a number on his economic stability. He's now completely top heavy on mass. And would you look at that? Astrofu and Aleg with a whole lot of ranged pain in the form of two crabs and two fat boys. They might as well come in here and try and push in through the front door. Wave of scout planes out there from Astrofu, right over the top of Democracy. And all they're really looking for, of course, is that strategic missile defense kill. They take that out and they can go to work with strategic launch the detected. nuke. Well, they're not even going to wait. He's probably got a second one ready. In fact, he's got two more in there after this. And he's got another nuke launcher up here. And Astrofu says he will take care of the strategic missile defense before those missiles get into range. In come a wave of strap bombers. Down goes the SMD. Democracy running away with the commander. And both of those nukes will land in exactly the same place. Not that it matters. A spectacular obliteration of the final member of Team 1 is now underway. Both of those missiles land. Astrofu going in for the kill now with those strap bombers flying uselessly overhead and getting gunned down by the last of the ASFs from Democracy launch detected. desperately trying to run away from those experimentals. Another nuke out from the main base, this time over towards the Western Plateau. We had a Monkey Lord under construction there and another artillery in pl placement. I think that might just complete a anti-nuke just in time, but it's not going to matter anyway because Astrofu is going to pick off the con with a strap bomber rush. Very nice indeed. Democracy trying to take out the crab with the onboard Mazer. But alas, didn't quite manage it. So yeah, the SMD managed to complete the anti-nuke in time and shoot down that nuke. Well, very entertaining game there indeed. Just shy of epicosity. I probably should have mentioned it was going to be a long one. Uh, I did think about classing it as an epic but uh, I don't know that was such a kind of a long drawn out protracted period of time at the end there where democracy was holding out it wasn't didn't feel completely epic but nonetheless incredibly enjoyable I think you will agree well I hope you enjoyed that guys uh, don't forget you can support me on patreon uh, as always more to come from me in the future though but in the meantime stay well and stay safe this is Guile signing out